for exterior recording. Yeah. And um, what I'm going to do during the talk, most, most of the talk is going to be, I'm going to have to rush because I don't have much time and I have to go through many things. But I um, want to go through a practical example again, so you can like check out the steps and my process in pipeline. The, the talk, by the way, is, is, is ready under Prezi on the internet, so you can just like go in Prezi, look for Sakato, and you'll find the talk. And there is a link down there where you can like test and download the, the, the example or some of the example files, so you can like try it on later on your cardboard. Yeah. Let me then start by showing you what I'm aiming for. So this is an stereo 360 degree video, fully spherical. So by the end of this talk, I hope that you get a clear idea of how to accomplish Hello. this Hola. thing. Welcome to Sacacho Studios in Elche, Spain. We are doing a low cost test on a stereo 360 degree video. Please have a look around and I hope you, you like it. Okay. <laughs> So, motivation for this talk, why, why extending it for a stereo? The VR content and, and head-mounted displays, from what I've seen in the last two years, year and a half, is a hot topic. So everybody's crazy about creating content for VR and head-mounted displays. And up to now, I never had the, the opportunity to try a stereo. But I mean, with the head-mounted displays, it, it starts to make sense. Yeah, and I'm not a, an a stereo fan at all. Yeah, I'm, I still believe that mono not, not a nice word for, to refer to 360 degree video, but mono video I don't think it hasn't been like yet used, and it's still lo lots of possibilities for that. But I mean, the industry is looking for a stereo, so we have to be ready to, to provide a stereo if that's that's what they want. Yeah, and. As I said, I'm a researcher, so I thought, okay, I need to start like trying this. So I created a simple experiment, yeah, to, to try a stereo panoramic, and um, because it's an experiment, it's an, an initial research. I didn't want to spend much money on that, so I decided to do with like the cameras that I had at that time, yeah, and I'll I'll we'll check those in a in a minute. Okay. Um, some stereo panoramic thoughts that I want to share. I'm not an expert in stereo. Yes, uh, like we have some people here in this audience who are like very, very good in stereo. Yes, so I don't want to go very deep into those details because it's beyond the scope of my talk and I wouldn't have the time. But stereo is nothing new. So stereo on itself is a big field, yeah, and lots of things like being done in stereo. And one of the main things with the stereo is parallax. So stereo, stereo and parallax are two terms that like come together. Yeah? And on the other hand, I'm a panoramic photographer, and for the last 15 years I've been fighting against parallax. So there's a no parallax point. So in a way, there are two concepts, stereo and panoramics, that they are, I don't know, they fight against each other. Yeah? And anyway, if you try a stereo panoramics, it's something that works. So I'm just like saying it's an illusion in a way, but it's something that tricks your eyes, so it's good, I mean, and, and, and it works, yeah? So, some basic about a stereo panoramas. Stereo panoramics, basically what we need is two panels, one for each eye. One panel for the left eye, and one for the right eye, yeah? And parallax, what's parallax? Parallax means that we're like seeing one point from two different points of view, and that's what, it's what creates depth, so we need to do that same thing in, in panoramics, yeah? How do we do that? There is a very clever single camera approach for, for creating stereo photos, panoramic stereo photos, where you just like get the camera off the nodal point, you do some clever processing with masking, and the, resort, uh, uh, the results are really, really good, but, but it's only good for static scenes, so you cannot have anything moving, maybe for interiors would work, would, would work okay. And my aim is, is video, really. So, I mean, to create, 360 degree a stereo video, you need to use a, a multi-camera approach. Yeah? So I decided to use two of my little cameras. So I built up a simple a stereo holder. Yeah? Two Elmo cameras that I happen to, to have. So I said, okay, let us try some stereo with this. Yeah? And at this point of the talk, I'm just gonna go into the 
example itself, and I'm going to run through it, all through the three main stages of it, which is imaging capturing, the processing, and a final video assembly, yeah, to achieve full spherical stereo 360 degree video, yeah. So, let me start. Uh, while I do this, I'll try to also like throw some of the concepts that uh, help me to understand, yeah. So, image capturing part, what I do is I capture a panorama with this camera. I basically will rotate as we capture the panoramas. And at some of these um, positions, I will also record video, yeah. And I'll show you an example here. So, this is a panorama for the left eye. So, I took 24 photos here. So, I'm just like going around. Off the, not, the no parallax point. Same thing for the right eye. So I have another set of 24 photos that will like go around, yeah? And then I have videos. One for this camera, left video, right eye video. And uh, in, this, in this example, I recorded two videos at two different positions. So that would be one, and the second one. OK. So one initial step that you have to do with videos is synchronize. That's why I use a, a clapper. So this would be the same videos already synchronized. So I, just, I use that clapper on this first video and that one are synchronized up. These little cameras can shoot 60 frame, frames per, per second. That helps. And this experiment, for this experiment, I use 4K 60 frames per second, because I also wanted to test like the, the maximum quality that I could achieve, replicate this later down. Hello. OK, so one extra step that I do here is I um, strip the videos into an image sequence. So I have an image sequence for each of the videos. For the first video of the left eye, second video on left eye, same thing for the right eye. Yeah? First video right and second video right. So let's go now into the processing. So in here I have 24. I don't, I'm, I'm going to be using PDQ now. I'm not going to go too deep into the stitching technique. There is a talk by Jim Waters tomorrow. I'm probably he will like know more and can like give you more more insights on this. But I'm just gonna throw the twenty the forty eight images there and just hold on. I just need to let Pity Good know that it's a full frame fish eye. And I'll just like do it automatically and say align the thing. This will just like take some time now. So it's basically aligning the thing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just like letting Pity Good do it all for me. So it's aligning the pictures. Notice that it's like the right and left eyes all together there. So I'm like just throwing the left eye and the right eye. That, so the first 20, 24 images will belong to the left eye, and the, the next 24 images will belong to the right eye. This is a, not a very powerful computer, so I'm not using any sort of supercomputer to, to, do, to, do, to do so. Yeah? Okay, and later on, I will also try to explain the point of how many Im images to use. Yeah, so we have this thing now. So we have a panorama already, which is made of all those forty-eight images. Yeah, it's already looking more or less okay. Yeah, and I could always go, and out of those twenty-four or forty-eight images, get rid of the second eye is the right eye, so this would be the left eye, yeah? And if I now go and do the same for the second one, this would be the left eye, okay? So I can like separate the eyes, and at this point, I want to go into some details of how many images to use, yeah? So I did, um, I did a processing test. My, my initial experiment had 24 images per eye. So what I decided is, okay, I'll stitch 24 images for each eye, 
but why not like select um, a smaller subset of those and I will stitch 12 images every 12 de uh, every 30 degrees or maybe eight images yes so I'm reducing the set of images that I need for each eye yeah? um, my aim is video so I don't want to be processing loads and loads of background images as I said I'm composing video out of a background static image and video on top yeah so I want, I want to keep the number of uh, background images as low as possible, yeah? So 75 degrees, yeah? And every 90 degrees. So in this case, each eye will be made of out of four photos, yeah? Okay. So if I process that and I create the panoramas, this would be the left eye panel for 24 images. This would be for 12. This would be for 8. This would be for 6 and that would be for five and four. So the panels are still there. So you can see it, yeah? So what the number of images is actually doing, I'll show you the right panel now, is helping reducing the stitching errors. Because we are off the no, the no parallax point, so the more images we have, the smaller the error will, will be, yeah? In a way, it won't be seen as much, yeah? And how does this affect stereo? So I did this very simple experiment. I like put those in my Googles and I tried it. And I will try to show you here, like with the panoramic twist. This is what with, with 24 images for the right and the left. Yeah. Let me just get this right. So we can see the panoramic twist there. If I do it for 30 degrees, so all of them behave quite similar. Yeah. So I'm seeing that, that panoramic twist, I tested that on my Googles, and I, what I saw is that the depth effect was very similar in all cases. So I say, okay. As I said, I don't want to be processing many images, so I decided to use only six images per eye. Yeah. I'm going to go back into pedigree now. So I choose six images per eye I throw those into pedigree I'll take pedigree that is a full frame fish eye I'll tell pedigree to align so this will be much faster now so I have that panel there yeah left eye right eye I can get rid of the right out of the left eye and what I want to do now is Go back to the videos that I had, take a frame, and I stitch those into this background panel. Yeah, so I've extracted one frame from each video. So I'm just going to put those into pedigree. We're going to go into control point. And we have this new image here, yeah, which belongs to the video. I'm going to see where that would like, go more or less in my video. It would be somewhere like there. So I create contour points for that. Yeah. They're like short over the same position, so it nicely matches there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the second video on the left eye. And I optimize now again automatically. And what Pidigo is doing now is like sticking those two frames from the video into my background. Yeah. And if I replicate that for my right eye. Put those in, control points. So image 15 would be like in my set, image 6 there, generate control points. And image 14 would be 11, I think, somewhere like there. Control points, yeah. Align the images. So what I'm doing is like, these are my source files, yeah. So I'm sticking the uh, uh, reference vi uh, video frame into my background, yeah. So at this point, I more or less have everything I need to process my full video, yeah? And I'll, let me just go into image parameters. So you can see that we can change the blend priority. <coughs> yeah. So let me just show you one eye here. I will just go and get rid of the first five images. And I will get rid of the left eye. So that would be the right eye 
template in a way, and if I show you the left eye template, I was just activating, activating those ones. On the, the, the left eye, okay? So as I said, what I have here is from this main file, I have a source template file from where I can extract my processing, yeah, PV GUI processing batch, uh, batch stitching files, yeah? So how do I do that? Well, basically, I get rid of everything from here, and this will be my template for the left eye, yeah, background. Then I do the same thing, and I'll show you that. I have already pre-cooked, so this will be my left eye background, yeah? Six images. This will be my right one. And then I have, and I'm gonna actually render that. So you can see. So I'm gonna create the panorama. There. I'll open the right one. Create the panorama as well. So I have my backgrounds already there. And now I have to process the videos, yeah? So I have one frame here for the first left eye first video, and I will create that as well so you can see what that's going to do. I will just create a JPEG with that single frame, like a rectangular, yeah, and should match the background. And I can do that same thing for the second video, left eye. Right videos. It, it, on a stereo, it gets a little bit more messy because we are like dealing with more information, but it's exactly the same technique that I use for, for, for mono. So I have that one, that one, that one. Yeah, so we can see these are the videos, yeah? So how do we process? How do we use this now? Okay, I'm gonna go back to my left eye first video, is here and I'm gonna use this as a template over the whole set of images, image sequence on my left eye, yeah? On my first video on the left eye. So I'll go to Tools, Batch Builder. I'm gonna use that parent file as a template. This will be my left one. And I'm gonna generate projects, so I'll go back to the image sequence folder, so it'll be left one there, open. Okay, it's replicating it, generate projects, so it's generating the project, and I'm gonna send it to the batch stitcher now. So I have to do this four times, yeah? Okay, there it is, that's the, the left eye. Let us do that again for the second eye. So this will be left, yeah? Second video, so again, Go back to Batch Builder, use current template, make sure that I say L2 here, generate projects, browse, L2 now, open, OK. And I repeat this four times in this case. Sometimes you just need one, one pair of videos, sometimes you might need three pairs of videos. So that would be L2. So I have my computer now rendering the first video, second video. I'm just gonna go through the other two. So this would be right one. Yeah, it's always like a bit more complicated here, but back again to batch stitcher, use current template, right one here, generate, and I make sure that I select the proper image sequence, which would be the right one. Okay. <coughs> Um, we are already rendering here. I've only like selected a small sub subset of the whole video, so you can like see it. This would obviously take some more time. And if you have a proper computer anyway with the new PD GUI, it's pretty fast. So this would be the third one. Send to batch stitcher. I'll change the name there to R1. And the last video.
should we write to? So I'm repeating the same thing again and again. <coughs> and we will see the result in a minute. lines of rendering there going on. And this would be the last one. So you can also see that you can do sort of like parallel rendering here with PD GUI. Yeah? That nice little trick, I learned it from Jurgen Geertz here, that he posted somewhere. Uh, the four lines, you see this here. I'm gonna stop them now, because this will just like take some time, and I've already pre-cooked it. So, okay, abort, abort, and abort. So if I go back to my original file, we see that we have a new project for each sequence and a resulting frame, yeah? It for the first video, second video is 60 frames per second, so it moves a little bit slow. Yeah, but it's just there. Right video, same thing. So at this point, I have everything ready for me to put it together into the stereo composition. Yeah, just let us have a look at. That last one there. So everything is already processed. So how do I do now? Okay. Let me just open the left eye panel there in Photoshop. And this is very similar to what I was doing um, with my simple technique. Let us go back to that sequence, open it as a sequence, Say 60 frames per second, whatever. And I'm going to create now. I'm going to create a folder, apply a mask to that folder, put my thing there. This is right, the uh, left one. So it's just, just like make sure that you like write your names out, otherwise it could get very messy. Okay, so we have one there, and I can apply a mask there already. Right. Okay, let me open left two. <coughs> Same thing again. Create. Okay. I'm just doing it fast. We will check later. Oops. We will check later on a proper cook example. But I'm just going to mix those two together. And I'm missing the background. Just like sort them out properly. I'm missing the background. So I put the background for the left eye there. Should put it at the background. The masks are inverted. So I just put it that there. And there we have the first video. Okay. If I do that again, in the stereo, you have to do things twice. But for the ones that have already seen this technique working, it would be like duplicating the same thing again. But for, for those who are new to the technique, it might just help you to understand it better. Yeah. So I'll do it again. So now for the right, right eye, I'll go and open the first process video, put it inside a folder. Create a mask, paint with that mask. <coughs> Open the second one. Image sequence. I'm going to a bit fast as well because I'm running out of time here. Yeah. 
Same thing again. Mix this together. This would be R2. And we have here R1. I invert the mask. I'm still missing the background. And now I come back and go back to my right background. It's right here. Put it there at the back. And we have the video for the second act. Okay, as we can see, the videos nicely stick to the, to the background. So now it's just a matter of actually extending the canvas. When we work, one of the formats for stereo videos went over and under, yeah? So I'm just extending the canvas there. Sorry, this is just a jig. I'll do it over the video here. So we'll extend the canvas. <coughs> And I will just like put this, I'm just going to put it in a folder so I'm not sure this is the right eye. So this will be the right eye. And I just like throw it there. And that would be an stereo 360 degree video. Okay, we're still missing like some, uh, the nadir and zenit, yeah, and some corrections, and I'll go back to that in a, in a second. So, more or less, this is the processing pipeline, yeah. Let me open a quick one for you. But let me go first to the background, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, there, is, there are parallax errors when we use this technique, yeah, and those parallax errors can be corrected. When I first started doing panoramics, I built my own panoramic head out of aluminum, and I had so many stitching errors. That was like about 15 years ago. But I got used to deal with parallax at the time. So what I'm seeing now is that similar errors that I was facing some years ago, and I know how to correct them, yeah? So this is the pretty gooey thing with the, all the masks, yeah? So I can just like do small corrections, and I'll try to show you those. So basically, I'm correcting these parts with masking. Yeah? So, I don't know. There are some stitching errors there that you have to check out. One important thing in a stereo is that the errors on each eye, they should be like, be similar. Yeah? So what I do is I try to replicate those sort, same masks on the correction of the second eye. Yeah? So we can see here that my masking on the second eye is similar. So I'm correcting the stitching errors similarly for both eyes, yeah? So this would be the corrected background. And how do I deal with the Zenit and Nadir, which is also, also important? I'll just reproject an image out of the rectangular, like 90 degrees pitch, yeah? So I have a rectilinear now for the Zenit and the Nadir, and this is just some like basic panoramic patching, yeah, for the Nadir and for the Zenit. It's a simple one, yeah. A stereo on Zenit and Nadir is complicated. So I'm like correcting here. So once I have this, I can reproject back to a cool rectangular, and we'll see that in a minute. So I'm all gonna open, and this would be my final master file. First, I deal with sound. I'm not a sound expert, but I mean, I'm just throwing. This is Photoshop CS3. So I'm just in Photoshop for all my video processing. I'm just like throwing the uh, MP4 with some sound there. So when I like um, put all, all the whole thing together, I have some sound. Then I add the background. Yes. I put the Zenit and Nadir, which is there already, the, the correction. Do some like enhancing. I can add now the videos. And notice here that I've like, spent some more time on the, on the masks. But not that much, like anyway, you know? And finally, some and final enhancing, color corrections and these sort of things. Yeah? So this would be my final rectangular, fully spherical, yeah? Stereo video, yeah?
go now into file, export, render. I can render a master video out of here. And let's go and see the result, which is what we saw right at the beginning. Anyway. <laughs> You can download the video. I'm using actually the, the, the player I'm using is Colorize player, and it looks pretty good. You can come later on and talk to me. I'm not gonna have question, uh, time for questions, so come to me later and I can show you. Welcome yeah. to that. So with a simple camera system, more or less, I got the whole workflow to demonstrate that I can do like stereo with two images. And the stereo is actually pretty good. When I show to people and I've like talked to some experts, and they say it's, it, it's, it's looking good. Yeah. So some conclusion. I'm only using two cameras. The, the technique is camera independent, yeah? So you could use any two cameras, higher end cameras. Uh, for the sort of video I'm doing, I require some sort of a scripting, nothing different to how I used to record before. So I used to call this technique, and the mono technique that I use, 360 cinema, because of the scripting, more than 360 video. And it's a static, you won't be able to do like moving sequences, fast sequences, but you can create very static, relaxing experiences. Yeah, which is like a big thing in for some companies. They're doing like that sort of like productions and people are, are liking them, yeah. Father work with the technique. The quality of this is low. So I'm gonna replicate and I'm already doing that. I'm gonna replicate it with two Sony 7AS and it will give me 4K 60 frames a second, which is gonna be a nice quality and it will probably play really smooth on the Samsung GRVR and Oculus today. Yeah. I still gotta learn a lot about stereo, so I wanna like play some experiments with the interpopulary distance and play with some like ortho, hyper, and hyper stereo like values. How things affect the composition in a stereo is different to the composition that you do in mono. So you have to like take that into account, the distances to the object, to kind of like direct the the, the attention, or you know. So I have to do experiment experiments over there. And one like silly experiment also that I'm thinking about is using two different cameras for each eye. Same lens, but two different cameras, and see how that like affects the, the, the final result. And basically, that's all. If you, I don't think I've just like run over the time by some um, minutes, so I don't think we'll have time for the questions now. Come and talk to me later. And thank you very much for your attention. Any question? I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything has been recorded. So this guy has been very fast. So you'll be able to review it more than once to be sure that you understood. <laughs>